Hey guys, welcome back. It's your girl Sade and welcome to Sade's Mix. If you're new here, hi, welcome. Today I decided to give you guys a break on serial killers and today I am going to be discussing a cult. I have always found cults super fascinating because I always try to figure out how or why um, these people are so easily brainwashed and manipulated into staying in the cult joining the cult like I really don't understand how and this cult has it all they have manipulation abuse castration so this is definitely gonna be a wild story now before I get started in the actual video I do want to just say thank you to everyone that reached out to me regarding my last video the five reasons why I quit my job I will link it up here so if you guys want to check it out definitely do so but I just want to say thank you to everyone that reached out gave me such great words of encouragement all the feedback was definitely appreciated so thank you so much and if you are looking for more videos about my journey and true crime please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you are notified when i upload any content so enough of my rambling let's get right into the story today i am going to discuss heaven's gate a UFO religious group that was founded in the 70s. I'm going to touch briefly on their beliefs and their two co-founders. This story was actually inspired by a Family Guy episode. I know, I know, don't judge me. But do you, do you guys remember the episode where Meg met this girl and she had a blue tracksuit on and she brings her back to like the cult housing and everyone's wearing matching gear and has the same haircut and they're like in the presence of this older male with white hair and a white robe. Well, believe it or not, this episode briefly summarizes the events. In order to understand Heaven's Gate, we have to pretty much understand the two founders. Help me introduce to the stage, or my stage, Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles. Marshall Applewhite was born on May 17th of 1931 in Spurs, Texas. His father, who was also Marshall Applewhite, making Marshall a junior, was a Presbyterian minister, and it was said at a very young age, Marshall would follow in his father's footsteps, and he was a very religious little boy. Besides Marshall's love for religion, he also had another love, and that was music. It was said that Marshall was talented, he was able to sing, he was able to act, and he really loved doing that. As a young man, Nothing was really out of the ordinary with Marshall's life. He would go to graduate from Austin College in 1952. And once he graduated, he pretty much re-enrolled right after in hopes of becoming a minister just like his father. And in that same year, he would go on to marry a young woman and the two of them would have two children. Now, not much is said about his marriage and I really couldn't pull any of the details up, but at least we know he was married at some point. Now, although Marshall would re-enroll in attempts to become a minister, Marshall wasn't ready to give up his musical gift. It was said that Marshall was able to sing opera music and he just had a way or a presence on a stage. And many people would say that he just had a certain way to him that would draw them in. We're going to talk to you about the most urgent thing that is on our mind and what we suspect is the most urgent thing on the minds of those who will connect with us. So I stated Marshall was not ready to give up his musical career just yet. And in 1960, Marshall would make an unsuccessful attempt at being an actor in New York City. Eventually, he realized that this was not for him, so he dipped and decided that he wanted to start teaching. Marshall was teaching at the University of Alabama, and that this job didn't actually last too long because it was said that at some point, Marshall developed homosexual relations with one of his students. He would then leave this teaching school and head back to Houston, Texas, in hopes of just changing his life back around. Yet when Marshall got back to Houston, it appeared that his life just started to really fall apart. In 1968, 
Marshall and his wife would actually file for divorce and it was said that during this time period Marshall sh truly struggled with his sexual identity then in 1970 Marshall would just quit his job he told the job that he was having a lot of emotional distress but a lot of people that were around him during this time basically said that it, it appeared that Marshall was having a nervous breakdown and during the same year, Marshall would also lose his dad, the one person that he actually looked up to. The loss of his dad just sent Marshall into a deep depression. And by 1972, Marshall was actually in a mental institution dealing with his depression. During his time in the mental institution, it was said that this is where he would meet Bonnie Nettles and the two would develop a spiritual connection. What is a spiritual connection? I don't know, but sometimes you know you see somebody and you're like, mm, that's him. They probably have one of those. So, who the hell is Bonnie Nettles? Bonnie Nettles was born on August 27th of 1927. And not much is really said about Bonnie's upbringing. What I was able to gather was she did come from a Baptist household and they were really religious. But Bonnie herself was not. Bonnie actually became a registered nurse and she would later on get married in December of 1949 and it appeared that her marriage was great. She would later go on to have four kids with her husband and it seemed like she had a very normal life until 1972. It seemed that Bonnie's personality quickly changed during this time period. So during this time period, Bonnie started to really perform several seances and she was under the impression that she was able to communicate and get instructions from a 19th century monk called Brother Francis. Now I tried to look him up and ain't no 19th century monk named Brother Francis, but she was under the impression that she was getting worldly advice and at the same time Bonnie was also going to numerous fortune tellers and it seemed that every one of the fortune tellers kept telling her the same thing over and over again they would all tell her that she was going to meet a mysterious man that was tall fair complexion and sandy hair that would change her life forever now when I first read this I was like yeah, Marshall definitely fits that image of being tall, fair complexion, and sandy blonde hair. So I can definitely understand how Bonnie was immediately drawn to him. Because after hearing it over and over again, it was an image that she just could not get out of her head. Now, Bonnie and Marshall's meeting, no one really knows how they met, but this is the story that I was able to gather. Once they met in the mental institution, Bonnie would go ahead and do a spiritual reading on Marshall. And at that exact moment, the two of them knew that they were destined to spread this word. Now, remember when I told you Bonnie did not have a strong connection to religion? Well, it appeared in 1972, Bonnie was very knowledgeable about the Bible. And the two of them decided that they were the two that was discussed in the Bible of the book of Revelations. And it appeared that the two of them were inseparable. They talked about their dreams, their belief, prophecies, mysticism. When I first heard the word mysticism, I was like, what the hell is that? I'm definitely going to leave the definition right here because reading it, I was like, what the hell is this? Anyway, they shared all their beliefs together and it was clear that they had a common theme. And as time progressed, the bond just continued to keep growing and keep growing. And then Marshall was released in 1973. And during this time, Bonnie decided that it would be best that she would leave her family behind and she would travel up and down the West Coast with Marshall, sharing their thoughts and beliefs. The two of them really did believe that they were the two mentioned in the Bible and both Marshall and Bonnie both ignored earthly laws. They said that, you know, they were higher power and that the earthly laws did not pertain to them. When I read that, I was just like, really? Really? You don't believe in the laws? Whatever. So... What happened was eventually the law would catch up to them. Now the two would get arrested twice. The first time they were arrested, it was for a credit card fraud, but that was dropped because 
of whatever reason the young lady said that she did allow them to use her credit cards whatever the second time though marshall was actually arrested because he failed to return a rental car that he had rented and he had the car in his possession for well over six months marshall was sentenced to six months in prison for not returning the rental car and during this time him and bonnie really fine-tuned their ideology for what is now known as heaven's gate they did go through several transformations i will list the names down below um, but we will only refer to them as heaven's gate now as i stated the two really refined their beliefs and this is what i have interpreted their beliefs to be because it's actually really hard to make sense of what they believed in and what they were trying to spread because it, does, it really doesn't make any sense but hear me out so the Bonnie and Marshall believe that once again that they were the two from the book of revelations and that they, they believe that they came from the level above human this level above humans is a literal and physical place in outer space also describe the body as just a vessel and in order to ascend to the next level the human had to remove all human aspects from their life family friends alcohol sex gender all of that had to be removed in order for the ufo to come back and beam them up now when i read this i I laughed it's just the easiest way to say that I laughed because I was like who in their right mind would listen to something like that the relationship between Bonnie and Marshall was very unique it appeared that Bonnie was the foundation to Heaven's Gate she did the literature she put the plant pamphlets together she set up the meetings and then Marshall was the voice of the group um, even more strange is that both Bonnie and Marshall never engaged in any sexual activities. They believe that it was best to, as stated, remove sex from the equation. But personally, I think the reason why they didn't have sex is not that they didn't want to. Is that, as stated, Marshall truly struggled with his identity. And this is the 1970s. It was still taboo to come out as a gay man. And I think that he just found a way to remove sex so that no one else would be happy. Eventually, Marshall and Bonnie decided to set out and share their information with others. Marshall did most of the talking due to his smooth sounding voice and Bonnie was really the foundation making signs and putting together um, sessions. I was actually able to find one of Heaven's Gate's flyers and it states this, two individuals say that they were sent from the level above humans and will return to the level in a spaceship UFO within the next few months. This man and woman will discuss how the transition from the human level to the next level is accomplished and when this may be done. This is not a religious or philosophical organization recruiting membership. However, the information has already prompted a number of individuals to devote their energy to the transition process. If you have ever entertained the idea that there might be a real physical level in space beyond the Earth's confines, you will want to attend this meeting. And this flyer was pretty much used over and over again and heaven's gate was able to recruit numerous people at the group's peak it was said that they had at least 200 crew members that were willing to make this ascension to the next level now get this although they had 200 followers at the time Bonnie and Marshall realized that that was just too many people and they decided to start weeding out people. They only kept the most dedicated and most obedient people to follow them in the next step. Bonnie and Marshall also made it so that the followers were not able to form 
friendships within the cult and they we were not able to talk about the doctrine with others and that bonnie and marshall were the absolute truth the two made sure that their followers kept performing tasks throughout the day and having them do ridiculous things like wait outside so that the alien spaceship can beam them up or look at the stars for hours upon hours on end so they just had their members doing all kind of crazy conspiracy thing. It was said that the group experimented with several strange diets and they experimented with sex in the very beginning. Well, it was said that Marshall was having sex with a lot of the male crew and some members wanted to completely prove their loyalty to both Marshall and Bonnie and many of the male members agreed to be castrated. Even Marshall, he was eventually castrated with eight other members of his group. Now, if you don't know what castration is, go look it up. You look it up? Isn't that terrible that like you would put somebody through that? Like, why? Whatever. But yeah, he had men that were castrated. And everyone in the group looked exactly the same. They all had like these five-year-old haircuts. In 1980, the group decided to ditch the nomad lifestyle and they started renting homes. They were like, yeah, we're not living outside no more. The aliens didn't beam us up yet, so we need to go inside. Now you're probably wondering like, how the hell did they pay for renting rooms? A lot of the members would donate blood, sperm, just to get by. A lot of them would also get odd jobs. Some were web designers, so you know, the World Wide Web was just being developed. So some of them were web designers. Others would use their like social security checks just to fund the group and fund their housing. So they really didn't have any income. I was also able to uncover that a lot of them had aliases and they would work under their aliases in order to fund Heaven's Gate. Now, this part always gets me like once they rented out these homes, the members would have one house and Bonnie and Marshall would be in another house and they ran the followers house like a boot camp lifestyle. They also made the followers cover up the windows so they were very secretive about their practice. Now Bonnie and Marshall was said to be very generous and in 1983 they allowed their followers to go home for the first and last time. Um, they all went home on Mother's Day, but before Bonnie and Marshall released them to their families, they stressed the importance of telling their families that they were learning computer science in a monastery and to tell them that everything was okay and this is what they wanted to do, which some of them truly wanted to be a part of them. Others were having second thoughts, but nobody left the group. In 1983, a tragedy would actually strike. Bonnie was diagnosed with cancer. It was so bad that she actually had to have her eye removed. And the doctors were explaining the severity of her cancer. And guess what Bonnie decided to Bonnie decides to tell her doctors that she cannot die and that she is part of the two in the book of revelations and that she will only pass when it is her time to ascend with her sexless partner marshall now y'all remember that i told you that bonnie was a registered nurse so she understood the, the what she was putting her body through and she truly believed in this cult so much that she lost her life just less than two years later Bonnie would succumb to her cancer diagnosis. Marshall would fall into a complete depression and he would constantly say that Bonnie was communicating to him from the next level. He also had to change the doctrine around. Before it was like your whole body and your soul would be um, taken up by the spaceship. But now he had to go ahead and say that spiritually your soul would leave your body and you would ascend to heaven or the next level above. By 1990, just five years after Bonnie's death, this is when Marshall started to introduce the idea of suicide as a possible way of reaching the next level. And a lot of his followers agreed that this may be the only way to connect with Bonnie as a possible way of reaching the next level. And a lot of his followers 
agreed that this may be the only way to connect with Bonnie. Then in July of 1995, a group of astronauts spotted a comet that they would go ahead and nail Hale-Bopp. Now this comet really interests Marshall. He said that the comet was a sign and that at the end of the comet, there was a spaceship that was coming to take them to the next level. So they were waiting for this comet to get a little bit closer to Earth, and that's when they would decide that they would all depart this area. They also believe that the spaceship had Bonnie um, in there as well, so that they would all be reunited. As the comet got closer in March of 1997, Marshall and his followers prepared for the next level ascension. The group would go out to a local restaurant and they would have their final meal, which consisted of turkey pot pie, blueberry cheesecake, and iced tea for drinks. Then sadly, a couple of days after their final meal is when it was said that the followers would go home and take their own lives. It was said that they would mix barbiturates together with alcohol and many of them had placed bags over their heads while they all laid in the exact same position. It wasn't until March 25th of 1997 where somebody hinted to the police that they believed that the group had actually committed suicide and when the police officers walked into their Santa Fe home they witnessed just a, a scene that nobody should actually witness honestly um, it was said that all of the members had on Nike track suits matching shoes outfits and they all had a purple cloth Placed over their faces and that is the end of the story now heaven's gate actual website is still up and running um, it is ran by the survivors of heaven's gate if you guys haven't checked out already there is a documentary on HBO go called heaven's gate the cult of cults I definitely recommend it if you're looking to get more information about Heaven's Gate. I just was just a very brief overview. But what do you guys think? Do you think that this was a mass suicide? Or do you think that Marshall murdered all of these people out of guilt, grief, confusion? I would love to hear your comments down below. Um, what do you guys think, of course? But this is the end of the video. I will be seeing you guys next time. Thank you for watching and bye. <laughs>